Guten Morgen once again, Hot Potters. Today we're going for a bit of a, a nature ramble to a place called Eschven. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, there's nothing spectacular to see really, it's just a ramble through the forest and just taking in some nice scenery for once rather than making to a place. So, off we go. We may also put a few of our musings in as we go along. Bit of a last of the summer wine gentle ramble this. Do 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 do. Right, we're well on our way with today's ramble. We're just going to make our way across a farm in a bit, which is uh, set back in the fields. But this area here, this forest here, is where I've done my recce for my little bit of unofficial metal detecting. Who knows what's in there? There might be nothing. There might be all sorts, you just never know. That's the fun of metal detecting. So yeah, we'll come here at some point and uh, get right back there in the woods, off this path, so nobody can see you. Because as I've explained before, you do need a permit really to uh, to metal detect. So, onwards and upwards. It's uh, quite a nice day today. Although me and Mrs H, we've woke up a little bit asthmatic, haven't we, this morning? But yeah, I think the pollen's high. Yeah, mm. yeah. Also, we've been in a different area. We'd uh, we'd been to that museum. So. Maybe pollen's different in that area, I don't know. <laughs> Too much beer. Oh, too much beer, well you haven't had any beer so that's not your excuse, what's your excuse? Too much cake. That was nice cake that I must have made. Dr Oak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just wander on for hours in these woods, can't you? You can get lost for hours. Yeah, yeah, we, well, we, we have done, haven't we, time or two. Now something we've noticed as we've been walking along is obviously in these forests they cut they cut trees down you know for timber it, uh, it's a bit of a business but there's lots of little pieces like that that you've just seen on the floor there that are no use for anything and we're just tossed at one side. Now I understand the idea of splitting them probably the idea to get them to rot down quicker but obviously there's a lot of um, wood burning stoves used in these areas. And I'm just wondering, you know, what the, the ruling is on that. You know, if you came in the woods and you just thought, oh, well, there's some logs ready-made, I'll just take them. Is it illegal? Or, you know, is there sort of an unwritten rule that you can take it as long as you don't cut trees down yourself? Or steel wood that's piled and clearly marked up for, for being removed at a later date? I don't know now. It sort of leans against that, because when we was in on that bunker walk, as we did the other day, there was a car that come past us and he was in woods and as soon as he saw it was he shot off. So, who knows, maybe you're not allowed to do it, I don't know. Maybe anybody who's, you know, lived in Germany or any German viewers that we have can explain that one to us, what the ruling is. It probably changes from state to state once again. Probably in Bavaria you get horse whipped for it. They're very strict there in Bavaria. We're just making our way through a bit of open farmland now. These crops behind me, we're thinking of corn, or they will be when they're fully formed. Yeah, we'll just pass that far, mouse now. Put dogs on lead because there's some cows in a field. I don't know if they have that UK right to come marching out with old shotgun or Luger, whatever they carry over here. We'll soon be back in the woods again anyway. It's crazy cows don't like because there doesn't seem to be proper fences anywhere. Well, we saw it with them sheep, didn't we? They had a mass escape and they went back in the field as though they'd done nothing wrong. Probably whoever runs that museum says, oh, a lot of damage gets done with people around here, trees and that. Being eaten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know, do you? Cows tend to be like sheep, though, they know, they'll only follow one, you know, one wonders off, and they also, oh, where's, where's he going? Oh, she's going even. <laughs> yeah. There's no male cows. This is before anybody points that one out. <laughs> Mr H has made his usual mistake. We're going downhill first, so the way back will be uphill. Yeah. So we're getting ear chewed off. Uh, bloody done it again. And here comes the rear guard. 
Once again, we see little things like the shed here that's just random in it, middle of the forest. You know, it doesn't it appear to be official. You know, it's not like it's views in the or something, and it it be painted up as it's a, an official cabin. So who's put it there? I don't know. Obviously, all these woods they belong to somebody. I'm saying woods are bloody forest, aren't they? You know, they all belong. Every bit of land belongs to somebody. Going back to metal detecting, that's what you've got to be at work worry of you know I think in this state if you do find anything it's 50 50 with landowner unless you've already worked out some prior arrangement you know yeah just for something else it's, it's lovely yeah maybe the wild man of the woods lives in there could be a dead body in there or a well, witch well we said that last time didn't we could be a dead body in it I don't want to go and have a look because if there is, we've got to deal with it then. There's language barrier, and we're on a tight schedule, so we'll let some, we'll let some other person find that. Behind me is that farm that we was talking about. There was just a speck in the distance. Beyond that, I don't know if you can pick that uh, mast up. It's Schwartz a man, an area that we go to quite a lot, and we'll be making a few films there later on in the holiday. So we're going to push on, we, we ended up going through a wooded area where we made a mistake when we originally came on this walk and guess what, we made that mistake again. But we're hopefully now back on the right path. For now. You end up somewhere, don't you? Lost, usually. Well, you can't even say the old UK thing, well, we're on an island, so... I mean, I suppose we are on an island, eventually. Go through Russia and all the way around. Right then, we'll see where this path leads. And once again, there's another random cabin somewhere. You know, they remind me of them, the old uh, council porter cabins that they used to have on wheels and when they were doing a job by the road. Because what the council used to do, I'll just go off tangent a bit here. They used to have it written in with the union rules that they had to go back and have a meal. So what the lower council workers were doing was spending too much time on road. I.e. they were going to the job, getting tools out at van, then they had to go back to the depot, have the brew, then come back, and then go back for dinner. Hardly anything was getting done, so they created these type of things, which were just a porter cabin on wheels, and they take it to the job with them, and the canteen was on the job, so it kept the workers on the job. So they got round it. And I think that's what that's been, because it looks like it's orange underneath all that, which was probably its original livery type of thing. I think they have a little stove in them as well, don't they? Because there's just a, a part that sticks out. Anyway, a bit more useless information for you. We have plenty. Or I have plenty. Mrs H is very knowledgeable. I'm knowledgeable on random stuff. I'm knowledgeable but quiet. Ah, there's a difference, isn't there? You don't have to share it. No, if, we're, if I'm thinking right, if my compass hasn't gone mad again, we should come up to a house at one side of this, like a public footpath, shouldn't we? You remember the house, don't you? She's staying quiet, though. I remember a building of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, well. We'll see. We'll see. Now, what we're using to follow is these little signs here, which say, Natura Vander Park. And the idea is that you follow those and they tell you where the walkways are. But as we found out, when you're using them, because they're just you know, stuck to the trees type of thing, you could end up going round in a big circle because it doesn't tell you a route as such. I mean, they do have numbers nailed to some of the trees, and at first we thought, well, why have they got number one nailed to that? And that's walk one, two, three, four, whatever it be. And, yeah, we've got we've come back on ourselves a few times following them. Now, Mrs H says they look like little coffee beans. I think they're supposed to represent a, a leaf, but I can see where she's coming from with the coffee bean thing. I think she was just disappointed. She was hoping to be like a little coffee stop somewhere and that was leading to it. Is that right, Mrs. H? Cake and hot chocolate. Cake and hot chocolate, yeah, sounds lovely. Right then. We followed that once. We probably did. We probably did. But you were right, we, I don't remember us going through trees, only back that way when we got lost type of thing. Well it appears we're on the right path. Uh, I certainly remember this little bit here, telling you no horses and that. 
And I remember these wooden walkways. I'm almost sure when we go through here, I only say that there's a, a grave in middle of nowhere in woods. And buried some poor sort. Of. Now they put felting on one side of this walkway so you know slip and fall, which is good. Although was it about two years this year since it was last year? Yeah, we didn't come last year. So these have obviously deteriorated in two years. I remember the timber being far newer. But at least unlike that bit of woods near where we live, they've not got holes in them everywhere where people have damaged them. Oh yeah, we're at near, where is it that? Near the Douglas. Yeah. It's a shame really that people do that for the damaged stuff. Ah, another one of the cheap seats. Yeah, we've seen one thing with, with some of them, uh, where they put like a block there for baiting the animal to it. Now I'm going to run with the thought that they do that so they can watch them, rather than just shoot them. Because that's a bit sick really. Hunting right, after this. Right then we'll just uh, we'll slob through here again a little bit, overgrown. So we'll join you again in a bit. We've got to that gravestone that I was telling you about, it's just in the middle of the forest here. You, you won't be able to see it from camera, but I'll try and read what bit I can. Name has, on it has been just eroded with time, but that looks like 1811, somebody's re-scratched that. Obviously you've got the church design thing there, what looks like ITS, or HS even. It's very worn, you know, it's a, it has been made out of a piece of stone. So who's here? And why they're buried here, I don't know. You know it's, a, it's a funny place to have a gravestone, really. Well, there you go. You Like I say, you find lots of these little things in uh, in Germany where people just leave them alone again. Although that would have been in a forest, somebody would have somebody would have broke it just for simply for the sake of it up in the UK. It's just sort of, you come off the main, the main drag into here. Right, we're not far off uh, Heshven itself. It's like a little seating area, and there's a you can look out and enjoy the view, as there seems to be lots of these little place of picnic. Very good dirt carved benches, I recall. Very substantial. That's has it not rotted over two years? So we've got here. This is uh, the notice board that tells you all about this area. You know the type of wildlife that there is: owls, butterflies. Crickets, I think there is. It's a cricket, a grasshopper, one or two. Now we're not at the seating area just yet. It's a bit enclosed in here. Obviously, when this was first put up here, this was probably a bit more open. Also, just uh, on these walkways, Mrs. H has had a thought. Go on, I'll let you tell them regarding the felt. That's all the leftover from all the sheds that they built. I didn't know what you're on about. I've been ranting on about all sorts of things. Yeah. All the sheds that they build, I think they'll just all bring down their uh, felt and stick it on here, so it'll be slipping. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it certainly helps, you know, from slipping. It does. Right, with a bit of luck now, just through here should be where the bench is. Because as you say, I remember random things. This is it, it's very good with a compass, you know, you'll say, where do you think uh, digs are for argument's sake? From here. And she can point you in the right direction, I'll take you the other way. Sometimes I just follow dogs and they bring us home when I go on a walk. I'm that bad. But uh, I do remember funny little things which I used then as sort of, you know, markers in my head for which way we've been. Right then, it's getting a little bit rocky for you, Mrs. H, so I think we'll join our viewer, our viewers, hopefully, a little bit further on. Well, we've made it to this little bench and table that uh, I was talking about. Now, uh, unfortunately, this area looked a lot different than this two years ago. All these trees that you can see that have been cut down, they was all standing. It was like in a little pocket of the forest here, and uh, 
did really feel a one with nature. It's quite sad that they've done this. No doubt that they'll have a reason for it. I don't think they've just come here to, you know, log trees and then take them wherever they do to turn them into timber. It's probably to manage the forest a little bit, but it just looks like a bomb, isn't it? So I'm a bit uh, disappointed with that, Art Potters. So we've decided we're going to push on, because this was going to be like our final destination. We're going to push on that way and head towards Schwarzer Man, basically. Because it all goes in one great big loop, doesn't it, Mrs. H? Every road leads to the blockhouse. Yeah, which is the... Uh, pub. The pub up at the top there for the skiers. So, yeah, we'll do that, and uh, we may come across that house. Now, that tree there, that just shows you, I mean, look, look at uh, the size of that tree, circumference-wise. That shows you it was a big tall one last time it was here. That's it, it's like a bomb, it? It is uh, sad. It, it, it is sad, actually. But who are we? Who are we to come from the UK and tell the Germans, you will not destroy that area because we may go back there one day. <laughs> Anyway, we'll push on and, uh, like I say, hopefully we'll come up to that house. We, we must have come up this way. We've been debating this all the way along. And we I didn't come up we've... this way. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. <laughs> I think we're getting it mixed up with another walk. Well... Because there's that assault course walk that we did once, and I think it might be near that. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be. Now, that was a good one. There was a little shelter there, wasn't there? You could look out and see all the scenery in front of you. Unless we're dreaming up these walks, which may well be doing. <laughs> could be anywhere, they might be up at Lan Lancashire or Yorkshire. <laughs> well, I know, I, know. I won't go that far. But you never know, you never know. So, we'll uh, we'll push on that way and head to the blockhouse now. Because I do feel as though I've, I've gypped our uh, viewers. <laughs> I was promising them a lovely area and this is what I've brought them to. Well, we're about two kilometres now from where we last spoke here. We decided to just push on rather than turn around and go back because it was A, through the forest. And B, it was uphill at the end and uh, little Lucy's flagging, unfortunately. So we think we're now back where we was the other day when I was on that uh, walk around all those bunkers of the former West Wall. I think if you head that way now, you'll come up to them. And we're thinking this way is, uh, is what leads away from them. We'll soon be able to tell you anywhere. The one thing about a lot of these forest walks, they do look the same and it's very easy to get, especially for me, because as Mrs H will tell you, my compass goes, woo! So anyway, we're going to head back now and uh, hopefully we're on the right road. We've simply given up on that house and that assault course tarp walk. I know exactly what Mrs H is on about, but where it was we don't know. We may find it this holiday, we may not. It doesn't matter though, it's all fun, isn't it? Like I said, this walk's just a bit of a, a ramble through the forest type of thing. There's nothing special to see, there's no uh, end game type of thing. It's just us walking through the forest, and hopefully you're enjoying this walk with us. I mean, it's stunning scenery, you can't, you can't fault it, can you? Now, although we thought we was on the right path, we, we think we're, we're one down from it, because we don't remember this brick bunker here. The Kreese Wasserwerk for Prom, so obviously that's part of the uh, the waterworks, you know, that feeds the city. Uh, the city, I keep calling it a city, it's nice, it's a town, the town of Prom. Uh, opened 1956, ten years after the war. Well, then we'll try and get back up and see. You can actually hear the water running in that, can't you? You can, don't know if it'll pick up on camera. Now, whether or not it's part of an underground reservoir system or not, I don't know. See if we can find our way back. Yeah, yeah, we might be stuck here forever. A bit lost. <laughs> now, you have got to be careful uh, when you're wandering around and just relying on signposts. I mean, I'm not running Germans down, but typical example is Eschfem, where we've just been. If we follow it this way, it's 5.9 kilometres. If you follow it this way, it's 9.2 kilometres. Then if you go on the other side, down this little narrow path here through uh, the undergrowth, it's 1.4. Now, you know, you could if you've just come out and turned up on a path and come to this, because you're a bit lost, you're going to say, well, which way is it? And you could end up going back the way you've come and double back on yourself. You know, it's very easily done. We've done that a few times. Um, you know, obviously, if we follow it down now, we're going to come back to where we started, and you could go round again if you wanted, type of thing. 
For anyone who's wondering why they're different colours, I think that equates to how, you know, the grade on it, because this one's yellow and this one's uh, blue. I don't know which way it works, whether yellow's harder than blue or vice versa. But yeah, just uh, we'll just put that one in, because it does, it does throw you. And we, at times we go a bit aggravated, because sometimes it'll take you down there, bring you out, and bring you back up on the same path you started, and you think, well, what was the point of that? Surely it's easy just walking along the same path. But ours is not a reason why. Now what's been amazing while we've been on this walk, we're about, what, 10 kilometres in now, and we haven't seen a single person. It's been absolutely brilliant, you know, you can let dogs off lead and just wander about. I mean, it is a weekday type of thing, so that's probably why we've not seen anybody, but back in the UK, you know, you go up to the popular places for walking and it's just littered with people, you know, groups of hikers and stuff. We're in here, absolutely nothing. Can be scary at times because you know you think to yourself, I've not seen another another living soul. Although, even if we was lost, how do we get it across to them? Anyway, just a, a little bit of a thought there. And I say it's brilliant this. I love this. Well, we're back more, we're more or less started on this uh, little walk round. We've done about 12 kilometres. We're not far from our digs now. Uh, it didn't pop out where we thought it was. It was a bit of a new path, even for Mr and Mrs H. So we were uh, thinking we knew it all round here, being experts, and uh, turns out we popped up somewhere different. We would have normally, had we followed the path where we thought we was, come round the back end. But uh, we're back where we started, which is a bonus, because it's not as far. So, we're going to get back now. Like I said, there was no end game with this uh, walk. It was just enjoy the scenery, which I hope you've done. So, until the next time, bye-bye for now.